does anybody remember? Did we did we do 1.7.1 or did we start at 1.7? I, I think that's where we stopped. I we think stopped it is, yeah. Okay. Right. So I guess start. Yeah, we had that, I think the last thing we talked about was someone had asked about that particular policy, and that's so that's one if. Um, like if a mobile home park's getting redeveloped, making sure that there's adequate um, uh, re housing for relocation needs prior to, to prior to displacement. Is this in the in the event of a storm, you know, a hurricane? And no, no. This is if if a, if a, if a yeah, if if, a, oh. if, a, if parcel if something's being redeveloped, so yeah. like mobile home parks are a good example because they're a lot of them are under single ownership by an entity or corporation. Um, if they're going to get redeveloped, um, the policy is intended, and there's state statute to this effect as well that um, before they're allowed to demolish and dis you know and. Uh, displace people, they, there has to be a certain amount of relocation assistance and availability. Um, so that policy speaks to that. So the, both the state and the county have um, policies that uh, or have regulations that speak to that mm -hmm. as well. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. A plan. Or a plan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A plan for how you're going to, you know, deal with relocation. I mean, I, 1.82, I have a problem with uh, recognize and protect existing mobile home and manufactured homes from non-affordable housing redevelopment. I, it should I'm be, so I, I would prefer it be protected from, which one, one, from all. 1.8.2. Point 0.2. Green highlight. Oh, I can't, I must be like close to blue, green, colorblind. Um. So the I mean, one that says you know, recognize the, and protect existing mobile home and manufacturing well, non affordable housing developments. It's pretty clear they're saying as soon as those mobile homes have anything are destroyed, we're going to move them, put affordable housing there, and we'll try to make places where <coughs> we'll deem that they fit now. So, new policy providing protection measures of existing. Well, that's only protecting them from one development. Why can't we protect them from all development? Well, that's a good point. I mean, that tip, I think typically what happens is we we see them getting redeveloped as new residential. Um, but no, I think that I think that's a because now with the live local, I mean, every property. Is well, a, a, well, not every property. So just for clarification, so the live local act only applies to property that has zoning of commercial, industrial, or mixed use. So if it's a residential office or something like that, all the other property is does not fall under the Live Local Act. So if something is zoned straight residential now, they don't get any special dispensation under Live Local. They still have to go through all of our processes and everything. But they're still you know, susceptible to affordable housing, regardless of whether through Live Local or not. Right. So. I think, so what, I mean, what this was basically trying to get to is that if you know, I mean, just if, if something is going to be, if it is going to be redeveloped, it should only be redeveloped as affordable housing, not any, that, that's what this is trying to achieve. Um, if so, if you're not going to develop it as redevelop it as a new mo mobile home park, then it needs to qualify as an affordable housing development is, is what the intent of that policy is. I think they should just be protected from development. Just protected from redevelopment. Okay. I mean, if anybody else, I just, you know, anybody has something. I just feel like that's the, the goal in all of this is, I mean, it's clear from the very beginning it was all support, you know, not just private developers, but in the very beginning, the housing authority and, mm -hmm. you know, everything is targeted for them. But, I mean, the real affordable housing is mobile homes. And it, oh, it there's no doubt it is intent, a natural, yeah, it, 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 prov it does provide a significant amount of, affordable housing that's not recognized in a line item somewhere as, as affordable housing. Because those so. people are not going to be able to afford the new affordable housing development costs. I mean, I, I'm not either, I'm not saying anything bad. I can't afford them either. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so we, we can, 
rework that a little bit to be a broader policy if that's support yeah, everyone's shaking their head okay yeah, manufactured mobile anything I think I heard all housing. Just housing development. Housing yeah. development. I mean, because once they're gone, it's already clear that all of this, they won't be able to rebuild there. They're going to be, so. So so are you saying you would prefer that it basically, what we're really trying to do is we want to protect it from. Housing, all housing development. From any redevelopment. Mm -hmm. Well, or housing, or I guess, I, I mean, I, I was thinking housing because it's a housing element, but I guess any redevelopment, I guess, I don't, it couldn't be used for any other purpose, though, right? Well, so we have some, we actually have, um. We have a one big mobile home park that's zoned highway business, mm. which uh, on keep development then because so I mean that that's a and that would be under the live local act unfortunately, mm -hmm. um, so um, all right let but I I think I see where you're going so okay, <coughs> policy <coughs> protection okay. It's uh, a simple sentence on the very first one on the following page from the cur current language. Does it say the same thing? Um, it's a it's a different focus. Um, it's it's more, <coughs> in, in my opinion, it's more. Um, it's a broader policy statement of housing should be context should be sensitive to what's around it. You don't want to come in in a single family neighborhood and drop in, you know, a large, you know, Is there a simpler complex. way of saying that, though, um, versus context sensitive? I, see, I thought context housing. sensitive was pretty, <laughs> pretty technical. What, was, I was, don't get it. I, I, was, I, I, I thought that was a fairly common term, but I guess no, it's not. It's, not. So it's we'll, in, your, in your world as a so, professional. Um, yeah. Well, I don't have any context to, like. We so compat it. so compatibility, huh? We have to define context sensitive, mm -hmm. because that is a very common. Well, there's no notes. Where do you define it? Mm -hmm. in, within the conference of plan definition section. Okay. Okay. So, so, so that maybe that's yeah. Good. Yeah, that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then maybe we okay. We'll read the definition. I didn't know what it was. It's really you know you're just trying to get at scale and massing and things that you know yeah, you know you, you can. Character. Yeah. Well, if it means compatible, why can't we say compatible? I think compatible gets. It seems like that word is being eliminated. It could be. From it could be debated. What is compatible? <laughs> well, that's that's the, that's the reason. Yeah, it means um, different things. Different. It's people. harder to debate context because <laughs> you don't get it. Yeah. <laughs> I think. I think context sensitive gets more to physical design and character, whereas compatibility also gets into yeah, just the see. use itself. Do we, do you have access to that definition that we can see? Where are you there's no notes on this Context sensitive either. infill housing, is there, do we have a definition for that? What number are you guys looking at? The following hmm? page. Oh, you didn't, what you, there is no number to it. The, oh, there's no note for that. Yeah, the, the number's on the previous page. So the, num yeah, the number was at oh, right. oh, okay. so starts there. One point one. Okay. Wait a minute. Yeah, no, that's not a mix. That's not. No, you're that's all a different. Is that the definition? <laughs> that's a note. It just doesn't say anything yet. Am I missing? Oh, the language. We're 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 talking about. Do you have an older one? Hmm. Huh. This isn't the right one. This one I've been using. Sure. Is it the package you had last Monday? Maybe. Let me see. Yeah. Let's see if I have something other than here. <clears throat> Not in here. Let's put it this 
way. Otherwise, we are right the term context sensitive info housing for me became complex. Sensitive oh, I'm sorry. Housing. It's on the back of here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> complex. Okay. We're, yeah, we're talking about if right here. Later, yeah, we're at a later date. <laughs> okay, thank you. I'm What's sorry. The yeah. number? We haven't figured out what it means yet. One eight one. It's being used again. Right above yeah, it's a next one. Um. Part of the I think it might help. Well, and that's what I was trying to get at is so that it, it's you know, it's looking at what are the what is the. What are, yeah, what are, yeah, what are their surroundings? But I, th I, th I think it's more specific, again, to, like, physical size and character versus actual use itself. Because, resi you know... But isn't that the objective, though? I mean, we don't... You're saying that the objective should be that they look the same and not that it's not in an area that doesn't have the same usage? I thought that was the point. Well, I think what we're trying to say is that it could be appropriate to put affordable housing in areas where there isn't currently afford that's residential in area residential areas that as long as you look at the uh, the scale and the physical characteristics and you're not overwhelming the area so with what with with uh parking on like th things that would, would impact the surrounding area so you're you're not building something out of context with if you're in a single predominantly single family neighborhood so it might be appropriate to have maybe a duplex or a triplex in an area but not not a you know not an eightplex type of thing mm -hmm. so we're trying to look at go ahead I, well, I was gonna say i i thought of maybe an example that we had recently that went to planning and zoning board of um it was the susana projects that was a project where we used the term content sensitive when we brought it to you guys. Basically what that meant is they were doing a multifamily development in an area that was primarily residential, but it had some multifamily. But what they did is place the parking lot behind the building, push the uh, buildings closer to the street to be more in context with the history and the development pattern. Um, so this was a smaller scale development that achieves getting some more housing, but that wasn't going to be detrimental to the neighborhood. So that's like kind of an example of a project you guys saw. We'll, we'll flag this and we'll bring back we'll a, definition bring a definition. And well, one of the things that makes me uncomfortable is because I reviewed those code hacks is one of the things was to eliminate the word compatibility from these comprehensive use plans. And I don't mm -hmm. like that elimination. It's very, so, it's very pointed because then people don't, un we still, I don't have a clear understanding of it, that. And it can be used. It's not, it, can, it can't be, people can't use that word to argue against something. So, and, and I think, I think the, the genesis of that is you have instances, and it happens quite frequently, they're, they're nimbyisms, they're not in my backyard, you know, sentiments of for affordable housing projects. If, if it wasn't an affordable housing project, it was just a multifamily project, you don't get the same pushback in some instances as you do from surrounding areas just because it's affordable. And, you know, we don't want... Oh, I'm just using a derogatory term. We don't want those people, right. you know. So that's where so I think that's where the genesis of, you know, the compatibility <coughs> issue arises. In but, that you can't okay, look at though. the two different, th you know, just because something is affordable housing doesn't necessarily mean, you know, it doesn't mean that it's incompatible, you know, with the surrounding area. And that's that's the context that a lot of us have had to had to had to work in so well but it doesn't change that the people might not want it there regardless of you change the definition they still you're not going to change people saying no, not in no. my neighborhood just because you change the word no you're you're right and so you're just making it more difficult for them to have a leg to stand on so that they can't say i don't want this here anymore but they should still have be able to say that i think if you read that definition yeah No, I, I know what it. I know a what definition it means. definitely. Yeah. Needs to I know be. what it means. Yeah. <laughs> means the, I mean, yeah, the I the guess. statement in general that's that's proposed to replace is is simple and clear, and it relates to everything, not just low income infill housing. So, I mean, it it kind of it's it's shorter and simpler, but it's broader than the previous mm -hmm. statement. So you like the original one? I'd like the I like the new one personally. Mm -hmm. I think the new one is 
I, New one with the definition. Yeah. Just so. Okay. Because I read something here that makes it very simple. I understand what it just said. Right. When I read the definition of it. I just don't like the intent. Where does your definition that, that come people from? can't say not in my just neighborhood? from mom. Um, <laughs> they can still say um, that. Well, yeah, residential they, context they can say sensitivity that. Yeah. Yeah. by Imagine stop. Lexington. But it okay. kind of explains it in a very simplified way. In fact, I saw it. It is wholly possible to add residential units while matching the consistent rhythm of existing developed so that the new seamless blends in with the old. Mm. That, I think that's from... That's, yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Oxford has considered together with the surrounding, uh, you know, circumstances or, or area, so in context with, fits it, you know, very well. Right. What it just depends on who defines what yeah. the context yeah. is. No. It's yeah. kind of a s sneaky way Not of the saying yeah. that, <laughs> that, that that if you if you have uh, affordable housing, it can't look like affordable housing. Mm -hmm. And who decides that, though? Yeah. Sometimes <laughs> come before you. Right. <laughs> we, we are the deciders. <laughs> yeah. Unless it's under live local. Then it's <laughs> that's what, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't really get a decision. Yeah. What was the alternative term for affordable? Attainable. Attainable. Attainable, attainable. So, yeah. Attainable? Uh, uh, obtainable. Yeah. Attainable. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. Moving along. So where are we? The next one, 1.8.1. 1. 1. Or 1.1.1. <laughs> 1. 1. Yeah. To another one, 1.1.1. 1. Yeah. 1. 1. 1. Well, I mean, that's entirely changing. It's not clarified. It's, it's saying continue to support to increasing it. Like, that's saying you're going to support something and then just saying we're going to increase density is not clarified language. It's completely different language. I think... Um, I think provide for density bonus. That's what we do now. You know, provide for density bonuses for affordable and context sensitive infill housing to incentivize. I mean, that's this, that's our common. That's what we do now. We have an affordable housing bonus density process through conditional use built into our land development code. It's been there for many many years. But uh, the word increase. I, I think is I think saying right. we're going to do increase, it. Yeah, I know, it's, I'm it's, not it's an, it's it an and or. I would just say get rid of it. I would just I think, start the sentence with provide for density bonuses. Or it, or yeah, or it, so. I mean, I'd be more comfortable with it if it said something like consider options including increasing density allowances yeah. and, and okay. density bonuses. Okay. That way, we're thinking about it, but we're not right. saying we have to do it. You're right. Okay. Six. Yeah, the, the workshops are six. <laughs> Excuse my language. <laughs> We're done. That's, that's on record, you yeah, know. Yeah. <laughs> We're, Pardon my interruption. Excuse me. We'll take a second while you get settled. Yeah. There. We're in, in the housing element at, oh, one, at policy 1.1.1. 1. 1. 1. Or it was 1.8.1 1. 1 in the past, depending on where you're looking Until. at. <laughs> Until I'm not, but I think I am. 1.8.2 is removed because it has the word compatible. <laughs> will the word compatible be anywhere in the in the revised language, or is it completely gone? I don't know, but I mean, I probably I will, I will, <laughs> I'll bet you that but, it's not it's not in there at all. I bet we can find a place for it though. <laughs> <laughs> There's a compatible place. <laughs> yeah. I, I honestly don't know if it is or not. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this doesn't exist in here. <laughs> I'm going to be looking for it now. <laughs> it's redundant with the other places that don't say compatible. <laughs> So the one point, the old 1.8.3. That's where we're at so, now. Yeah. There's a housekeeping error there. The, uh, down, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven dots down, they used principal instead of principal. 
allowing more than one what about principal building very low on the lot. That's also in there. Oh, this principal, this principal, the spelling of the principal. wrong, wrong principal. Wrong principal. Yeah. Good catch, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Renee, they're very low. What about? It? I'm sorry. That's added in there. Very low. Yes. Like very low income housing. That's. I mean, that's low and. Very that's low. that's below thirty percent area median income or lower. But I mean, we, you know, it, the, the, most of this is already in the land development code, small lot sizes. Um, no minimum house sizes is, yeah. that oh, is something that we should have gotten rid of a long time ago, because I don't think it's actually legal. Um, we, but we do have some zoning districts where we have minimum house sizes in there, um, which I don't think is legal. I'll defer. I don't recall where it's, you could have minimum yeah. Minimum house size. I, I, th I said I think it's something that's a holdover from a long time ago that probably needs to come out of our land development code. Zero lot line is allowed um, under our affordable housing uh, section, um, allowing manufactured housing to locate on. Well, that's all existing language. Cluster development. Reduce parking minimums. I mean, that's we have a parking problem here. Can we keep that out or we don't have a choice? Um, reduce, well, in the context of affordable housing, actually parking minimums are a lot lower than they are for a regular market rate um, uh, apartment buildings. Um, good example is uh, Santos Isles at the corner of uh, mm -hmm. Safford and MLK. Right. Um, and it, they... They got the benefit of a reduced parking. Uh, I think it was only one per unit, and it's still the parking lot is Empty. never really more than about three fourths full. So they just they're smaller. Generally, they're smaller homes. They don't have the means to have three or four vehicles. So I mean, that's just that one. I we just repeatedly see findings that support that. Can you define what's the difference between low income and then very low? That's the first time I've seen that in here. So very low income is, uh, hold on, that's going to be less or equal to 30% of area median income. I mean, that, that is like, that's public housing practically. I mean, that's the only way that you get units for that. Low income is going to be 50 to 80% of area median income. And then once you get above 80, you kind of start falling into the low mod and moderate income. And then workforce goes all the way up to 140% of area median income. Well, if you're looking for a place for compatible, that might be because, I mean, there will be people that might have something to say about, you know, being next to public, like super mm -hmm. public housing mm -hmm. being compatible. There is, though. I mean, I don't know if you can. I don't know if you can put it in You there. keep in mind, like, the, actually under the housing element. Yeah. That is one of the that is one of the categories. It's okay. it, it's uh, low income, and I'm reading directly from uh, one six one sixty three point three one seven seven. It's low income, very low income, moderate income. These are actual terms that. But we didn't have it in the other one. That's why I, I was said. just yeah. checking. Yeah, it wasn't in the original policy. What if it it before we go to the bullet points right at the end of the statement, mm -hmm. we added including consideration of options including. So that we're considering these, we're not saying we're absolutely going to okay. do these in every instance. Mm -hmm. Good idea. Okay. I don't think see anything wrong yeah, with that. Suggestion. That yeah. Because because I mean some of them are appropriate in in right in different situations, and some of them wouldn't be. Right. This actually might be where we want to weave in the the context sensitive again, or you know, yeah. so. And for a note too, um, as the attorney pointed out, the very low income is statute is on the statute, so that would be good to put in the notes more than the survey responses because that clarifies why it's really there, not just because I don't think anyone in the survey actually asked for it. The language that says allowing more than one principal building on mm -hmm. one lot, and it says, i.e., cottage courts. Mm -hmm. I guess I'm not quite sure. 
so right now <coughs> you you can't have if you have a, a platted lot you and it's zoned for single family even though it might be a one acre lot you can have one single family house if you wanted to do something more than that and let's say that there's density that you'd have to go through a subdivision process and you know because there's no way to allow more than one one principal building on a lot so there's instances where we've had interest to you know maybe put like a, just a small cul-de-sac in and have whether it's called cottage court so you you own the unit but you don't own the land underneath you can you can get there under certain zoning districts by way of if you do a condo plat um but there's just it's just difficult under our under our codes right now um and it, it's a they're usually very small they're usually not uh you know big developments you'll see them you know like i said it might be a little cul-de-sac with five or six homes on it you know and they're but it's on in this instance they wouldn't have to be platted and subdivided into individual lots you'd be able to build have more than one home gotcha. and the rest would be under common you know common ownership so it, it's just a it's just a development type that is hard for us to get to under our land development code um, without going through a ton of machinations. That's a slightly older version, but it's basically uh, the same. See. Sounds like everyone's turning the page. Well, actually, I was looking okay. at the housing, uh, continue to appoint members of the Tarpon Housing Authority. We, we just do that. It doesn't really need to be in the, the board. It's it's vested to the Board of Commissioners anyway, so it's not, it's not something that really even needs to be stated. Encourage a workforce. That's a hypothetical saying, question. It's, a, up to, it's an income threshold. We're in the policy. Slightly above Would there be affordable. any policy as it relates to organizations like Habitat for Humanity, the vet, the, you know, mm -hmm. vet uh, homes for uh, is there something or does it fall under any of these? Because I see how we identify Pinellas County Housing Trust. We we list them, mm -hmm. but do we have anything that takes others under consideration? I don't think we specifically call out. I don't think we specifically call out Habitat, but do we? Other like nonprofit organizations. Yeah. Where's that at? Um, on page one, it's the, the second. Okay. One down, objective, uh, old objective 1.1, new objective 1.2. Yeah, non-profit organizations. The, yeah, just as long as we have something that yeah. allows yeah, for the... Yeah, trying to cover the full spectrum. Yeah. Yeah, okay. we do. Originally, that was divided into two different objectives and very specific to the um, housing authority and whatnot, so we expanded it. Where is it? Um, on page one, it's going to be your second policy now. It's objective 1.2, highlighted in yellow. Non-profit organizations in the private yeah, sector. Good, good, good. That's good. So at least we have something that encourages that as well, or allows it to be considered. Oh, there it is on the next page. Mm. <laughs> Workforce work housing. Mm. One point three point one. That's where I'm at. We start off with the word "define." Yes. Mm -hmm. Is that appropriate? Oh, well, city shall define. Oh, uh, the next page. One point three point one. Yeah, but we're on one. Okay, one point ten. Yeah. yeah. We just kind of. Yeah, we're just trying to set the parameters. Yeah. For, okay. I'm kind of, can I ask a question? I'm kind of jumping down to 1.3. 1. 1. Mm -hmm. um, I was wondering about this. I was kind of following it on the news lately, and 
people who are building, is this what's called an accessory or a, a unit or a small home? Mm -hmm. Mother-in-law suite. Yeah. In-law, right. Mm -hmm. So that's allowed? That's all, yeah. In all of our single family residential districts now, we allow accessory dwelling units by right. Um, with parameters around them. They can't exceed a certain square footage. They have to have common utilities. Um, it's, you know, the, the residence, is, the primary residence has to be, it's got to be owner occupied. That's a little bit difficult to, in the long haul, to really enforce. Uh, but we do have that already in our affordable housing section of the Land Development Code. It's more gender neutral. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what was it? We got the whole education on the, what's the, the Greek term for the, the Kamaraki? Yeah. <laughs> Say that again. Kamaraki. Kamaraki? What's that mean? Little oh, Kamaraki. Yeah. Kamaraki. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. yeah, little room. Little, <laughs> yeah, is that what? Okay. That's the slang term for little room. Okay. But apparently that's where they ship off the old men to stay. Yeah. I don't know. Yep. <laughs> Where my dad grew up. with page five. I don't see anything that makes me want to ask a question. So for 1.8, that's including affordable housing that should also meet minimum construction code, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> everything has to meet Everything has to meet it. Housing is everything. <laughs> strikeouts so can you kind of summarize why the rest are just so we don't is that all just flood related uh, some of it's just really not discretionary the other ones are ref referring to historic structure you know it's, it's homes and stuff so that's <coughs> been moved to the historic element what what is a demolition program technique <laughs> where are you at? so okay Established principles to guide conservation, really, guys, and demolition program techniques. And sir, I have no idea what that was supposed to. It was vaguely <laughs> reworded from the current language. So, so established principles to yeah, guide they, conservation. Yeah, they picked it up from the original. Demolition and demolition program mm -hmm. techniques. Sometimes like dust control, erosion control, minimizing the impact on the surrounding properties. Those are all things that yeah. come to mind with demo notifications. It falls under. There's the policy before it um, talks about the demolition program of the police department. So, mm. police department? Our police department has mm. demo probably the same so at least from my experience, I don't know how it may be different in Tarpon because I haven't done this in Tarpon. Usually, when it is a police demolition program, it's usually because it's a um, like unfit a structure, an unsafe structure, mm -hmm. and Drug then, again, I haven't. Yeah. This is this is at least my experience. It's on safe structure at that point, right. it gets demoed. Better gone than mm -hmm. present. Yeah. Yeah. Based on yeah. the other policy, that's kind of what I gathered. Mm -hmm. There's techniques to do that right. <laughs> like in Venice, we do it through a court. We do it through a judicial action, and then um, we get bids. So. But <laughs> I'm kind of I'm like I'm not sure that this policy is doing a whole lot for us. Mm. <laughs> Uh. <clears throat> I'm just going to circle that one and examine a little closer. I don't, I'm not sure I'm convinced that that's a, <laughs> a policy that's achieving anything at this mm. point. I, mean, yeah. I think the policy before it kind of covers it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, it could mm -hmm. probably be more useful or, or be gone, either one. <laughs> Oops. 
And then I would just I would call attention to the two point two point one. Um, no. We just pretty majorly overhauled that section of the land development code, so and that all did get approved by the board of commissioners, mm -hmm. so that is effective now. Um, so that's been addressed pretty extensively. Mr. Vesey, is there anything you wanted to go back to on the housing element since you weren't here at the last meeting where we talked through this? I wish my memory was strong enough to say that I <laughs> okay. had something. Yeah. Just thought I would give you, if you think of anything, we can always pick it up at another you time. You can use your memory to default. <laughs> there is one item okay. that may be relevant or not. Recently, I had a uh, I'm in construction, um, a project that was related to pervious and impervious ratios. Mm -hmm. And uh, I visited the building department thinking that in my particular neighborhood, I was on a fact-finding mission, that there was a uh, set pervious versus impervious ratio. And much to my surprise, um, there is none. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it appears that the entire City of Tarpon Springs does not have a ratio. Now, if anyone doesn't understand what that is, it's pretty straightforward. The idea is if you have a residential lot, we'll leave commercial off for this moment, is that you're only allowed to cover so much of it with impervious surfaces. Like concrete. Correct. Structure. The concept there is we flood. Mm -hmm. It rains all the time, yeah. and the more that is impervious, it runs somewhere else. Um, and in my experience, I don't think I've ever encountered a municipality that does not have an impervious impervious ratio. Having done a worksheet, I just saw it today on another permit mm -hmm. for Safety Harbor. Mm -hmm. It's very serious business, and they take it very seriously. So I don't know if that's relevant at that moment since you asked. I thought it struck me as very strange that we don't have that, and perhaps it's a good topic, mm -hmm. and this would, might be a good place to bring this up for both residential and commercial. Go ahead. I say, so after we spoke, because um, we talked a little bit about this, I went back and I talked to Renee, too, and we do have, so right now, ISR, impervious surface ratio, does not apply to single-family residential projects. Um, but we do, I believe, have an already in our land use categories an ISR, and the re reason why is because they allow for some non-residential uses, so that's when it would apply. So I think that we can maybe go back to the future land use element and see how we could potentially apply it. We probably have to take a look and see what other yeah. municipalities do for comparison, or the utilities element too, yeah. What What is an ISR? Impervious surface ratio. Oh, silly that. Yes. So, so that's yeah, your percentage. I but, but no, I, I think that's um, <laughs> something that we definitely want to revisit um, on the future land use element and establish it, whether it's in the housing, it needs to be in the future land use element because that's where the rubber hits the road. So for all of our residential land use categories, I think we, you know, and we'll look and see what Pinellas County is using. Um, but 0. 0.65, 0. 0.35. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. So, uh, yeah, I, otherwise, I mean, you know, I'm seeing it all over the place, especially as, as water rates continue to go up and it, it costs a lot of money to try to keep landscaping alive, you know, it seems like the default is, well, I'll just rip up all this landscaping and I'll just put pavers everywhere. Mm -hmm. And so I'm seeing that happen a lot. And so, and while that might solve your water bill issue, now you're creating another problem by an increased runoff and affecting your neighbors and things like that. So, so it, I think it does need to be addressed. I just want to put one point of clarity that there's two different terms. So there's the ISR, impervious surface ratio, and there's also lot coverage. Mm -hmm. So typically lot coverage only applies to like structures. So in this, uh, the smart code that we have, lot coverage yeah. means the structures or the buildings on the property. Mm -hmm. Your ISR is really everything that's impervious. So that would be you yeah. know, pools patios, sheds, everything. So sometimes you'll see two different terms and they mean two different things. Yeah. Up north, we, we defined what constituted lot coverage and it would include driveways and, you know, anything impervious to that. So, uh, but a ratio was always in effect almost any jurisdiction I ever worked or lived in. And also they had a requirement for dry wells. Now that's not so practical down here <laughs> to a great degree, but that yeah. would be caused to accept all those impervious surfaces for a three inch rainfall. Uh, and that ha that's how they gauge the volume and the amount of dry well necessitated. But, so. 
Yeah, so, I mean, too often, so forgive me. Just we have passed through the future land loose. Well, future well land use we, we had talked about eventually that's going to all come back to you guys again. But we will we want to definitely look at what some other munis are doing and the county and adjust our future land use map categories to reflect an ISR for for residential. I, I think that's just good business. Renee, I, oh, just real quick. Somebody, um, I saw people asking after the hurricane about these, I guess, companies that raise your home. Mm -hmm. Like, is there a certain procedure? Because like talking about flooding for neighbors, I mean, if you do that, first of all, you're still in the flood zone. Even your house is now more protected, but your neighbor's homes are now, like, aren't, wouldn't they get that runoff? Well, it depends. It depends on how it's being done. Yeah, if if they're if they're just you know raising them on on piles and then skirting the bottom, you're not really increasing any additional runoff at that point. Does um, they have to come through any? Board? It has to go through the building department for for permits. Absolutely, yeah. So um, Is that done a lot around here. Um, I it's pretty rare because it's just it's it's really expensive. Now I do know that I think after this last hurricane, or maybe it was from. We, there are the, there are some mitigation grants available. I think at the individual property owner level to where you can get a certain amount of money toward elevating your house above base flood elevation. So now there are instances where you know I mean generally they're gonna generally my understanding is that they they, they jack them and then they they put like a new foundation in. I don't think they come back and like backfill around it with oh, increased are. dirt that would cause that runoff. But yeah. our building department, would they would evaluate that okay. um, on a case-by-case case ba basis. With the past two hurricanes in Cedar Key. Mm -hmm. Cedar Key has done that. They, mm -hmm. you've seen, I've seen the hotels mm -hmm. elevate and put new foundations yeah. and raise the elevation and also homes that are along that coastline yeah. doing that. That's crazy. Doing it again. I have a general question. Mm -hmm. um, is there anywhere, I would think it might be in housing, the subject of docks on waterfront? Mm -hmm. And I look at two issues, building requirements, such as elevation, because I've seen a lot in this recent where docks were completely underwater, mm -hmm. and some of them were destroyed. And then the other is use of waterfront for docks. I know there's been a moratorium on docks, meaning on public, you know, not they don't own the land along the shoreline. So, so if you have if you have legitimate waterfront property, and there's not there's not some sort of submerged lands between you. We we have some areas of the city around, I believe it's Whitcomb Bayou, where it looks like I have waterfront property, but you really don't. <laughs> and there's basically there's publicly owned land there. And so that, I think that's the moratorium area that uh, we're basically, and it's been revisited two or three times by the board of commissioners and they've held firm on it that, you know, if you live across the road from, you know, from yeah. that waterfront area, if there's, if, if the historical dock is there and you, you can maintain it, you know, but, they're not allowing any new ones to be built. Has the city ever looked at other municipalities or other communities and how they handled their, you know, publicly owned? Publicly owned waterfront? Um, I, not to my knowledge. Um, this is something that was, like I guess I've, I've seen it come to the board at least twice. Oh. And I think the last time it went to the board, there was a very emphatic direction of the board at that time is don't bring this back again. <laughs> but obviously you can't bind a future board, but... We've it, it has been it's 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 been decided and then upheld two or three times by the board and they just they're just not don't seem historically you, uh, as a policy haven't gone there. Have you seen in any of the other cities where they actually do allow permitting and you know use of on private on private no on submerged land on submerged land or city mm -hmm. the, the problem here is there's like city owned property mm -hmm. between. Yes, yeah, because the, the it, lot in the water. It, that gets very tricky considering it because a lot of it does depend on where your boundaries are, especially with the submerged lands between you and like. <clears throat> um, so it's I haven't seen it specifically in say like docks, um, because, like I said, it's more. I, 
you know, I have some, I work with other, several other coastal municipalities. Um, they haven't really had to do anything yet with it. And, and because now granted they haven't had like the issues like Tarpon Springs had, especially with this last hurricane. So, but from my experience, they, they kind of were shying away from it. They didn't similar to what this board, sim, similar to what happened here is like, they, if it's not brought up, mm-hmm. they're not, they don't really, because it's because it is costly. Um, because we're, we're seeing it with um, even just raising up a raising up a house, it's costly to do, and it brings in potentially other issues as well with um, the if the with state government, county government, um, federal, depending depending on where it is. The the one of the things that was discussed kind of at length was since it's you know so if a strip of land is publicly owned and. Why does the why does the property on the other side of the road have any more right to use that for a dock than any other property owner in the city? Why can't, and that's that's how this whole thing kind of got, you know. So and that was why I think the board really was like, this is there's no fair way to do that. Why why is it just because you happen to own the house across the street, you technically, you have water view property, but you don't have waterfront property. True, true. And so that, that was part of the discussion <coughs> as well. <clears throat> to your point about docks themselves and construction standards, and we very much um, defer to Pinellas County. We, we have their, we follow their dock ordinances, you know, chapter and verse, essentially. Yeah, Pinellas um, County yeah. and DEP are the, yeah. are the agencies that really deal with dock permitting the, the city just has a fairly rubber stamp review. Yeah, we, we review it for, you know, yeah, for center one-third of the, you know, and the length, um, and making sure there's not a boathouse going on it and things and, like that, but we're, we any, don't really get into anything else. And any new docks are built up higher uh, so that, now obviously, in a storm like we just had, some of them probably were underwater too, but the are the you, really low ones that we have problems with. Do you uh, recall though, Merle, that you're seeing that the county or the city is putting a elevation, minimum elevation? Because I haven't seen that. Mm-hmm. So anyone can go out there and put a an ele- can build two mm-hmm. of the setbacks built to that, but I haven't seen where the county or even even core has identified a minimum elevation. For so people are putting them like just a foot above the wall. Couple for feet. for fixed docks, they do DEP requires a, a minimum they, elevation. They an elevation. Yeah. Now floating docks, I believe, yeah, obviously, they, they are, are yeah, a different matter. But okay. fixed docks, yeah, they have to be up a bit. Uh, still, to be functional docks, they they can't be up enough to be completely out no, of true. risk for mm-hmm. sure. And that's coastal management is found where? It's on the next one. Yep. Oh, it's the next one. Wow. Nostradamus. <laughs> yep. yep. So we, so previously, you know, we had the coastal and conservation uh, element. It was one element. And so we have bifurcated that into the coastal management element and the conservation element. So um, hopefully, again, so you're going to see some things that are like moved, stricken through. Um, so I'm going to rip this apart because it's easier. And I mean, Caroline, did you want to provide any bigger overview than that right now, or do you um, as to some of the changes? Caroline drafted most of this. Mm-hmm. Say that again. <laughs> it's going to be very difficult to read in strike through underline. It's going to be very hard to follow. I would implore you to please look at the clean version and then we can forensically go yeah, back. That's, to the that's a good idea. Mm-hmm. If we see something that we have a problem with, because it really has been designed to almost in order meet the state statute. So if you were looking at it next to the state statute, um, you kind of. 
So did the statute change recently? Is that because I know that we were statutorily compliant Something like of all the paper. Um, it's, it, <laughs> I'm fine with reviewing the clean version. Mm -hmm. okay, and then if we have any problems, we can go back. You, can, re you can take us directly to it. All right. <laughs> Not mixed in with something else, man. Maybe. That, the first one, two point, not so, the second one, 2.2.1, <coughs> utilize the land development code to support marinas. Does that imply public or private marinas, such as Tarpon Springs Marina versus a private? I think it would be both. It, it, it's both, I think. And under objective 2.2 itself, I had a question, Carolina. I was mm, objective 2.2. Coastal land uses will meet the standards and criteria for location, intensity, compatibility, and adequate infrastructure. Criteria of what? <laughs> I just, I read that and I'm like, okay, I'm putting my board hat on here. and All of those items. Let's just look at the wording later. I mean, I, I just, to me, it was, seems like it's missing something and I just couldn't put my finger on. I think I understand the intent is like, you need to review things for all these various regulations and you need to meet them, but. So, sorry, Nick, I didn't mean to tramp over top of you. You were talking about 2.2.1. Oh, you had to ask about marinas. Yeah, that would be yeah, both. Yeah, public, yeah. Private. When it talks about dredging and filling, prim primarily dredging is what I'm asking about. Are they, are they talking about maintenance dredging, which everybody has to do periodically, including the city, or should it say new dredging to specify only, dr only talking about dredging of of areas that are Are you still under 2.2.1 or are you under it's the, the bullet? Yeah, it's the third bullet. 2.2.2. Oh, the third the bullet. Yes, a need for yeah. dredging. Or so, yeah, so this was a, this really, what this really is, is like marina facility siting criteria. And so um, I'm going to guess that you will find that 
criteria also in the Pinellas County Code as well. Um, I think, considering the following, I, 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 to me, I, I get your point. I, just to me, that would apply to siting of new facilities. If you need to do extensive dredging to get a canal into a boating facility, that's going to be discouraged. <coughs> but obviously, maintenance dredging for existing stuff, I think, is a different, different. Uh, yeah, I, th animal. I think just want to be careful that we're not. So prioritize the north bank of Anclo River working waterfront is just gone? Commercial fishing, gone? So, actually, no, it's not. It's, I, that's, yeah. I have a hard time doing yeah. the clean version. I just really yeah. can't. Right, so know. that is all, if you recall, we, under the, um, in the future land use element, which is where you're really going to find it, um, we now have the, uh, the place-based map and we called out those those areas specifically for commercial working waterfront, the fishing. So we, they're all in that. They're yeah they're 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 in the future land use element where you're gonna key on them and find them, um, rather than trying to core through an entire. And that, that move was made largely because this is very regulatory language. Yeah. If you were to go, let's just look at 2.2.1, and then take me to the blue line one, and where's 2.2.1? 2.2.1? Yeah, I'm just trying to see, like, I'm looking at the clean version, but, like, if I had to go back and look at... 2.2.1, Yeah, policy 2.2.1 on the clean version. Where's that on the spread on the big sheet? What page? Three. Six at the top. Four. I see it at four. Yeah. Huh? Where, what did it replace, or is it, where where would it have fit in under this old one? I mean, we had well, we we had uh, we had very similar criteria. I, I believe it was in the future land use element for siting of marina facilities. Okay, I found it. Sorry, I found it. Okay, I'm glad y'all found it because I apparently I missed. I just it's on page six. It's the top one. <laughs> it's new, totally new. Okay. I'm missing two pages of the strike through underline. Oh. Jeez. Yeah, yeah, it does. Preference. Should we say that, though, Pat? Because dredging, I could see it includes maintenance. But would one read this and say that, yeah, if I read this, I would think that that applies to any type of dredging. So that's why we should, so maybe we add the adjective new? Uh, yes. I, I, I think. So, yeah. Policy 2.2.2 .2 right below that talks about I think the more typical dredge and fill that you guys are referring to as well. So maybe we could provide some clarity between the two. My, I mean, my, my interpretation of 2.2.1 is that this is meant to address new yeah. siting of new marinas. And it's not, so I think just, I think we want to amend this policy language a little to, you know, support new marinas and boating access yes. facilities, yes. considering the following criteria. Yes, mm -hmm. that makes sense. Yeah. If you put it up yeah. there, then all of these categories yeah. right. apply to right. you. Well, somewhere I noticed it actually does mention to uh, prefer 
expansion of existing right. facilities also. Mm -hmm. So so this is not necessarily entirely new facilities. So that's what I was, I was just saying it's new and expanded. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And I think if, if we say new in front of the dredging, that covers it. As, and as somebody said, it's it's almost impossible to get through DEP and permit new dredging at this point anyway. But you can't get a maintenance. You can, you can do maintenance. Yeah. 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 So, Renee, so just with the future <coughs> land use, and maybe you can just make a note to go back when we go back to the future land use, how, <coughs> how this ties in with protecting commercial fishing in the working waterfront because I'm seeing a lot of preferences for marinas and and I with this inconsistency between the one and the other I don't want that to become a problem where oh it's inconsistent so you have to change your future land use or whatever because they should be yeah, okay okay Good no point. I, I yeah I don't want to see all our commercial and working waterfront overrun by people with marine just so they can put their boats Ab out. absolutely absolutely yeah and and seems you to know, be the so um I mean this is a this Caroline, this bulleted list, is that coming from <coughs> Pinellas County? Is, where, how, was that a previous list that we it had? Is a statute saying that we need to make preference for marinas? Because, well, well, but to your point, I mean, I think we can also, we can, I think we have the latitude to add a bullet that says, you know, impact on existing working waterfront as a review criteria. Yeah, I mean, what I'm seeing right now is two inconsistent policies, and every time that happens, one of them has to change. Mm -hmm. And there's this is not, because it, this change is not to become statutorily compliant. I know because you told us we were always, we were statutorily compliant before we even started this process. Mm -hmm. And there's no statutory requirement to make room for marinas. I don't. Let me, and, I, I, wonder, I, I see what you're saying. I, I'm not, yeah, I'm not looking at, I don't think that this is meant to prioritize marinas. But maybe but we add something to consider, you yes. know, all of this with consideration for the future land use element that right. where it's all listed instead of, mm -hmm. so add okay. it and, and just refer to that policy within this one so that mm -hmm. it's tied together. Okay, so add a tie back. On that 2.2.3, where it says ensure development proposals that may adversely impact coastal environmentally sensitive areas are reviewed by other affected jurisdictions and agencies. Mm -hmm. Do you, should it say all instead of other? By all effect, yes, mm -hmm. yes, by okay. all, yes. That's a good. Yeah. To to address some of the concern about the commercial boats and commercial fishing and stuff, you could also say utilize on 2.2.1 utilize the land development code to support both commercial and pleasure boat marinas and boating access facilities or something like that, where you do recognize that there's a lot of. There's a lot of the marinas in the area are, are for commercial boats primarily. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, I, I yeah, I want to revisit this one. Um, <clears throat> are we done with that topic? Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that's. I'm sorry. Who was? Two point two, point two. Mm hmm. I read it and I see where it says, um, all right, so review the approval of, of the Pinellas County Water Navigation Board for docking facilities, seawalls, dredge and fill, and other activities under their review. Shouldn't we also be saying that they should be seek, seek other approval? Because we know DEP, Army Corps of Engineers, has to approve even a residential um, permit. So we exclude them to only say that they're good if they only get Pinellas Counties. Well, 2.2.4 includes DEP, then. Mm -hmm. right. yeah, that's for development. 
if I wanted to apply for a dock permit, this is specific Sometimes about it might require, yeah. docking, <laughs> seawalls, dredge, and fill, and any other activities. Uh, maybe it falls under so, any other, but. So there's other, we have, there's a bit of a, I'm going to look to the attorney. So we, we can't hold up someone's building permit for, let's say it's a dock permit. And let's say that for some reason you think it might need an Army Corps permit. We don't have the jurisdiction to say you have to show us that before we give you the permit. If it's now Pinellas County is different because they are the permitting authority for specifically for docks, and I mean we operate underneath of them, so we review it, and it's still and they have to issue a permit. But to my knowledge, we can't really outright require, you know, well, a my, swift mud permit or a DEP permit before we would issue a building permit for a dock. My, my, my st statement is mm -hmm. dated. I know that when I applied for my dock mm -hmm. on Kramer Bayou, mm -hmm. I had to get the Army Corps sign off mm -hmm. and I had to get DEP letter of no objection. Mm -hmm. I even had to get a DNR letter of no objection. Mm -hmm. So I just am cautious that the way but it who, reads now. But who was pulling, but who, who was... Was the county stipulating that before the county would give you the permit to build? Um, because we we don't question. issue the dock. Yeah, know. yeah. okay. Remember. So. And I remember when that law went into effect, you just said DNR. Yeah. That's pretty darn old. That's what I said. It's dated. <laughs> I said it's dated. I said it's dated. Yeah. It's dated. I don't know what year it was, but I remember. Yeah. 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 It's just right now the way it reads. It's just wrong. It's only requiring the applicant. Besides getting a city to just get Pinellas County only, and I know mm -hmm. core. You people, you know, hey, you it's a it's a, it's in the application. We'll we'll take a broader look at yeah, it. Yeah, take a look. Just yeah, because I have, I'm actually dealing with code enforcement cases, similar. Mm -hmm. because, because they did because they didn't get the permit. We can come after them afterwards. Yes. Oh, yeah. But, but we can't hold going. it up <laughs> if but they you, don't. So if you don't tell them that, you, that, that they should be getting it. Right. They say, wait a minute, I got what you asked for. Now, obviously, if it's on your application. Yeah, it is. If it's on your application for, for a permit right now, that necessarily has an impact. If someone's going to hold up as a argument, well, 2.2.2 says I don't have to do it. Mm -hmm. um, so, therefore, and I permit Permitting office is going to go to you know, go tell you to pound sand, but you know it's got to get it. Yeah, but we'll we're see doing if we it can. down below where we talk about other agencies, mm -hmm. other affected jurisdiction agencies. I think we just add that to this one. Or reviewed. I mean, we can. You know, maybe it's a matter of, um, you know, making sure that applicants are aware that or, they have their other <clears throat> permitting requirements, and you know, I. I don't want to, I don't want to put the city in the position of every, every dock permit, every you know seawall permit that we are now notifying every jurisdiction, no. or affected jurisdiction. That's where my next ask okay. question is of, of, of you, you all. Can we at least check with Pinellas County mm -hmm. since we're saying that we 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 require a Pinellas County approval? And let's ask them what does their application say yes. for these categories. And if they does cover it, then you can keep the statement like you have right now because you know Pinellas County is going to be asking that. I mean, we actually use Pinellas County's application. I know. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, that's what we get is their application. So okay. Let me ask this question. It's just more over this whole mm -hmm. this whole section. Are we taking into consideration the, the the climate change impacts and making sure that this has some form of addressing that or making sure that the applicant or anything that we do here has a, has a tone of climate change Mitigation. Sea level rise mitigation. Mm -hmm. um, That's yeah. why I talked about the minimum the right. elevation for the dock. Right. Mm -hmm. um, we we definitely have sea level rise considerations in the 
Oh, well, I know they were in the old element. I Are they in the new element? <laughs> They're in the, they're in the, it's in the future land use element, and it's in, huh? It's in, it's in the goal, too. I mean, yeah, you know, it is. Yeah. Overarching. Right. That, that we need to consider. Yeah, resilience to flooding, climate-related mm -hmm. impacts. And then, yeah. yeah and then three. Oh, there it yeah. is. Yeah. There, there's a couple areas where it actually, you're, we're making a point to, to highlight, or not highlight, but mention that it's mm -hmm. climate-related impacts. Yes. 2.5 has it. Yeah. And 2.3. That's good. So I'm looking at 2.5.2, and it says, evaluate the feasibility of developing plans and programs. I, do, do we want to evaluate the feasibility or develop plans and programs to incentivize, incentivize climate adaptation techniques? Here, here. You know? Oh, to develop a plan or program? Yeah, so it's, it's really. Who's that? Who is that meant for? Citizens. That That's more for the, bolt, the, the, the city. The city mm -hmm. you know? So this is a two point five point two is really meant for the city to be sensitive to this, not developers, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. property owners. Okay. Well, what it is, it's like it, it's. Develop, if you take, just take out the evaluate the feasibility, the feasibility for a moment, um, if, if it's just, you know, develop plans and programs to incentivize climate adaptation techniques and the acquisition of property to prevent incompatible development in areas of repeated damage. Okay. That could be a costly endeavor. Yeah. So I think that's, you know, that speaks to the, you know, evaluate the evaluate feasibility, the feasibility of. <laughs> Not quite as strong as you probably would like, but yeah. Um, well, I'm going to motion for what the lady suggested, which is to strike, evaluate the feasibility of, and just go with capital develop plan for. I'm fine with that if everybody's aware that we're not ever going to develop plans and programs that aren't feasible. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's actually probably very true. Don't go making yeah. sense. Yeah. It makes total well, we sense. could do then let the board bounce it back. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, and let's. I think if we couch it in the, um, the and is not a mandatory here. So develop plans and programs to incentivize incentivize climate climate adaptation techniques, and or, and or the acquisition of property. Yeah, you know, just make it a little less. Yeah. Yeah. Because there are things you can do for adaptation that we can provide incentives for. You know. Mm -hmm. Even though it's maybe not recognized by FEMA for flood insurance purposes, but, you know, dry flood proofing your home mm -hmm. is, you know, can do a lot. Because you can dry flood proof, you know, up to your, usually to your lowest window elevation. And, you know, you can, you can do some things that secure your property that may not be recognized by FEMA, but that saves you a claim. <laughs> Is, is this an obvious tieback location to the uh, imperv perv policy? Um, Just because that is the easiest and most logical way to deal with all the things that were listed. Actually, it's under goal three. Um, is do we do we have in, in the coastal? It's probably it may probably be in the conservation element. Um, okay. But we'll we'll make a note to make sure that. Mm -hmm either here or in the conservation element that we have some sort of a policy that directs us back to the future land use element in terms of, you know, evaluating impervious surface ratios, especially in like residential development for, you know, to reduce flooding impacts and things of that nature. Maybe that would be a nice segue to your suggestion of um, encouraging. Um, now I'm going to be a little bit cagey for a second. <laughs> But there are triggers within the building code 
and the easiest trigger is the 50% rule, mm -hmm. right? That's an obvious trigger. But there could be a more subtle trigger that encourages the waterproofing of low levels, mm -hmm. which is common sense that people don't really understand. The drywall gets wet, they take it out, they put the old drywall back in instead of cement board and moving those electric boxes just up a little bit. So without getting too deep into that, maybe that is a really nice segue of, hey, let's use an opportunity whenever possible to help those homes, residences, or businesses that are below or within that consistent stormwater uh, uh, high rise mm -hmm. to say, hey, okay, here's one chance, fix it. Here's two chance, fix it. Three chance, let's fix it. So, and, and I think, yeah, I think that's a good, um, a good, a good approach. One of the things that we run into is once, once you tip that 50% rule with FEMA, then it's a it's an all or nothing. Yeah. You, you've got to bring it up to BFE, and 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 or, and they don't accept flood proofing <coughs> and things like that in, in residential. So, but to your point of there needs, so you you almost have to have some other pretty heavy duty incentive to get people to to do those types of things, some sort of trigger or threat or incentive. So I I like where you're going. I, I, and I don't know what that is. It just <laughs> I can <laughs> I can. <laughs> Yeah. But I could sense mm -hmm. that, hey, if we're going to have consistent high water, mm -hmm. um, we are. W w mm -hmm. and, and so what is that magical thing that helps the homeowner yeah. make that right. logical move? Yeah, reduce permit fees. Or... And, and then this, this yeah. could also tie back to your um, place-based map special mm -hmm. place beat map, Th those that are easily highlighted as flood zones that say, hey, if you're going to put a new roof on, we would encourage you to do this also. Mm -hmm. Can I? Are, yep. Please. Are we done with? No, I don't. I have a new topic, but I'll wait till okay. you. Well, let's go with the new topic. Uh, 2.5.3. I like it require the removal, relocation, or structural modification of public infrastructure that experiences repeated store damage, damage, including flood damage. Can we be bold enough to say that we should also add private? I mean, we've got situations where private infrastructures are creating repeated damage and they're not doing anything about them. And so is there, mm. I, I mean, is that, I don't know. I'm, I'm putting it out there because this, this is good. It tells the city. Mm -hmm. The difference is it's you're telling private citizens what to do with their property. And at that point, it's... Well, we have code enforcement that tells them what to do when they're <laughs> violating a code. <laughs> but if they... But again, considering code enforcement is, to, is corrective in nature. But if we're going to get to the point of <clears throat> now you have to move it or re remove, locate, remove, remove, relocate, or structural modification, then we're coming into Burt Harris Act. We're coming into... Um, inverse okay. condemnation. Um, we're coming into Good point. a lot of Good a lot point. of other issues. Good point. I put it out there, and I got I got a, a reasonable response. That's good. Oh. Uh, I. I just had about a day, a half day hearing on the fifty percent rule. Mm -hmm. Another bring me to spell. I am very familiar with. That. <laughs> That's a separate. And that, oh, we, they. Everyone needs to be aware of the fifty percent rule, especially if there's water around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. Okay. Good point. Fifty percent rule is. How much is damaged of the, the value or the amount of structure? Okay, I was kind yeah. of assuming that meant if you have yeah, more than fifty percent damage, then. So there, I won't take. Uh, there's there's two versions. So there's substantial damage and substantial improvement. Okay. Um, and if you basically go over 50 percent of the structure value, then you have to. You're no longer grandfathered in. You have to raise it or remove um, whatever your improvements are. Gotcha. Thank you. Goal three. Now, is this a new goal, or it's been one, and we're just updating it? That, that's that been there. Okay. It's been there. It's just been <clears throat> when it says elimination of existing, and I, 
I fully confess I know nothing about septic systems or the city sewer. But I, what I have a question about is um, elimination of existing septic systems. And what I thought of is where I live. And they have what's called a lift station. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are they talking about those as well or just private septic systems? Just private so this is meant to... The, this is meant to, so and to, okay, so these are exceptions to the public expenditure. So basically, we do want to encourage or allow elimination, public funds to be spent in support of eliminating septic systems. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's. Mm -hmm. And the lift station is in the septic. It's just right. pumping. It's a pumping from one system. One point yeah. to another point. Right. Okay. Right. This is where, for some reason, I don't that have the rest of this printed out. It so. kind of did. The septic system is on, stays on your lot. Right. The lift station is a way that everyone uses here to get all of that back to work. Yeah. It's to make the poop flow uphill. Yeah, it's yeah. A, it makes yeah. it pull uphill. Cool Gravity. <laughs> they're okay and they're safe. Exactly. Gotcha. Thank you. <laughs> I was nice. Huh? <laughs> to help blank yeah, flow poop. upward. We want to talk about poop. It's all about the poop. <laughs> uh, so uh, if, I, if I may, I, I, I want to do a type of... Um, <coughs> Excuse me. It, because it's referenced twice, um, back on um, a goal two under objective 2.1, policy 2.1.1, .1 near the end of the sentence... There was an and. Now, first, I circled. What is an asset-based economic? What is asset-based economic? Right. And if this has been answered, forgive me. No, I'm no. Slow. It's okay. No, it's so. Most economic development plans are are needs-based. I.e., you look at what your market is and you figure out what 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 you don't have, and that's the thing that you try to go after and get. Okay. Asset-based looks at Literally, that. What are the what are the assets that drive jobs in your existing economy? What are those things that you want to make sure that you preserve? And they, so it gets to intangible things like, you know, natural resources, um, your cultural resources, the things that draw people here. Mm -hmm. So does that make sense? Oh, it makes perfect sense. I am am embarrassed that I had to ask. <laughs> uh, okay. Now, this is going to make sense in a, in a moment. First, because I couldn't get that, I think that there should maybe be an asterisk or an explanation of what asset base, or just call it tourism, waterfront, cultural. Just, just call it out. Mm -hmm. And then perhaps, and this is what's critical as we are forward, direct permanent residential population concentrations outside of the CHHA, is that, in my opinion, that... And, and that, that, I know there's a fancy word for it, like residual sentence, or in, if you're an English major, it says something else. I think that's too important to be buried at the end of that other excellent topic and perhaps needs to become a policy on its own. Okay, I was looking at two different things again. Like, right, because I'm talking too fast. Three, which, where are we on the... So we're at policy, we had to backtrack because it's referenced point, again okay. on something we are talking about. 2.1.1 as a suggestion that the and, in quotations, direct permanent residential population concentrations outside the coastal high hazard area, perhaps I would suggest stands as a policy on its own, and I'll give an argument as to why, because it is a state policy. Okay. You're, you're, ab absolutely it is to prioritize water dependent uses, but then we move to direct away. So that's just an idea. And then it's, as we move forward to where we're at, is that under goal three, and they're, they're, they're tied together at, at a long string. Goal three, without reading the whole thing, reduce the risk to human life. Objective number one, limit public expenditures that subsidize development in coastal high hazard area. 
so again, we're referring to the CHHA again, but in two different places. There's something that I'm like, well, th th this is a really critical, really critical element, goal, policy, however you'd want to define it. And it has very important implications. Um, yes, yeah, it, it makes well, sense to split that mm -hmm. in two. Yeah. Okay. And then limit public expenditures in the CHHA. Can I interrupt you just for a second? Go ahead. The same vein. Looking, and I'm probably going too far with this, but I wonder what everybody else thinks. Objective 3.1, it says limit public expenditures that subsidize, blah, blah. Just would it be horrible to put severely limit? No. Probably, I guess. Yeah. I think what it's trying to say is that these are the only public expenditures yeah. that you can show. Mm -hmm. I think you are severely. Yeah. We have a lot of, we have a lot of the city in the coastal high hazard area. And so, you know, in case in point, we had a lot of public roads that got flooded. And so to be able to say, you know, to not be able to come back and fix those roads and and maybe affected infrastructure in large swaths of the city is just really that would be a significant yeah. economic yes. impact yeah. on yes, the city. Yes, it and would. And the public. There are places that have done it, but like the outer banks of North Carolina, mm -hmm. they basically said we're you're on your own. <laughs> we're kind of doomed, aren't we? Because we really are <laughs> huddled around the water. Yeah. We we have a significant it, it is definitely something <laughs> that needs to be, you know, not taken lightly. I used to think I wanted to live on the water, and now, yeah. no. <laughs> <laughs> There's a downside. Well, actually, it's... you can live in the water. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did that. I was in the Navy. <laughs> All right, moving on. I'm sorry. I love that, Anthony. At slosh, I love it. Love sea, what? Sea, lake, and overland surges from mm -hmm. hurricanes. <laughs> Acronym slosh. Mm -hmm. I love it. Somebody thought a long time. Yes. Yeah. 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 Where are you at when you see slosh? 3.1.1. Okay. Oh, yeah, okay. Sloshy. Oh, something that I just remembered. I was having a conversation with <clears throat> someone from Pinellas County, and I've actually talked, called up and talked with Megan. Megan's our floodplain coordinator. So the county performed their own vulnerability analysis that is, from what I am told, much more accurate than the FEMA level analysis based on LIDAR. And so there is a Pinellas County ordinance that basically now the way that their their flood plain ordinance works, you have to build to their standard or the FEMA elevation, whichever is more restrictive. We are we are looking at, you know, I just started looking at, at that option, but I would like us to add a policy in here somewhere to evaluate implementation of Pinellas County vulnerability assessment ordinance outcomes or something like that. So uh, we've got it established as a policy. I'd support that. Okay. I agree. Yep. Pick the wording wisely, though. Yes. Meaning that it's good. Evaluate. Yeah. Assess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And even implement. Yeah. <laughs> the most restrictive. So a lot of this we looked at recently. Um, yeah. 3.2.1. Mm -hmm. What is DU after five? Dwelling units. Dwelling units, mm -hmm. okay. 
Maybe we should spell that out. Yeah. <laughs> if you had it in the night, it would be a problem. They <laughs> <laughs> take five units. So. Uh, 3.2.2. Provide timely notice. Is timely pretty broad? <laughs> it is pretty broad. Um, and it is really, that one I, I know off the top of my head where it came from. Um, I think it said something about early. Yeah, prompt. Prompt notice. Yeah, yeah. This is another one of those. I mean, Pinellas County really issues, they, they are the ones that issue the evac orders. So. Although, I, I mean, I guess if we had local knowledge of something, you know, I suppose that we could override them and... Well, can we at least add wording that kind of references that mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. takes up? Well, I think I, I, I use the word timely specifically because a lot of times um, plans say things like early or as soon as possible. Uh, early, I saw 50 timely. hours. So it's... It, Used to be timely for the people that it used to be timely for. So mm -hmm. we need to tell people at mobile homes and on the coast, you need to know now. Yeah, they right. need to know first. So that's timely for them. Um, as you're seeing things progress, you may timely need to say, okay, you guys too, you need to know. Um, yeah, I mean, timely right. notice for the keys is a lot different than it is for. Yeah, right. <laughs> and that's why you yeah, have it, the, it, it, it the different notice. zones, you know, yeah. in the C and D, and it gets notified it first. Leaking in a little. Most of this. But you make a good point, though, about you made the com you made the comment about maybe defining the evacuees because evacuees means everyone. Well, it doesn't. I mean, it, for certain storms, it will mean everyone, but not for every storm. For some storms, it's just. You know, so is is the word evacuees good enough to mean mobile home versus? Now, I think maybe um, adding something about... Hey, Caroline. I'm sorry. I just also, Something about this also just jumped up at me. Provide timely notice that evacuees leave the city entirely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That, I think, entirely... We really... We want people to shelter yeah, as exodus. close to where they are as possible. I mean... I think the way we need to fix this is people uh, ordered to evacuate. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Good point. Couldn't we yeah, just leave be, even start it with or seek shelter? I mean, the, let's yeah, let's let's revisit this wording. Yeah, <laughs> in, in effect, let's not make it about the people. Let's make it about the area. Well, couldn't we just put in front of there coordinate with Pel Pinellas County's whatever evacuation in order point, to yeah. provide so it kind of puts timely the notice on to Pinellas. required yeah. evacuees. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, like in accordance with right, yeah, blank. right, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, and that, that leave the city entirely, I mean, that's way out of date now. They really don't want people to, I mean, you need to go to a location that's appropriate, but you don't need to go to Orlando. Right. <laughs> Unless you no, really the want storm to. just follows you there when you do that. It does, exactly. <laughs> I speak from it experience. Does, yes. <laughs> I left Tarpon to go to Cedar Key and ended up, had to turn around because it was hitting Cedar Key. Yeah. For Charlie, we ran to Kissimmee and yeah. had 35 mile an hour winds here and, and 115 <laughs> on the parking lot at the hotel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, this is just like a maybe a generic question. When I look at 3.2.3, it reads, update the land development code to prohibit the development of new or expanding nursing facilities, blah, blah, blah. So we there say prohibit. Mm -hmm. Is that consistent with our maps that says, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> mm -hmm. hmm? Yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah, I don't know why. It, it, we can actually look at that. I, I, we may want to just say continue to prohibit because we're already. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Okay, we'll check on that one. Yeah, that. But let's say it does. If it does, if we still allow expansions, there. But there, does that then become inconsistent with this though? I mean, what happens if it's zoned and it can have expansions? Yeah, we we, we them, need to try because I mean our own hospital case in point. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it, it's in an A evacuation zone, and 
they've done numerous expansions and improvements since Advent Health took, took over. So I think just let's look at, I don't know about. Well, you got nurses. Hospital, I don't, I don't know. I mean, they, but, yeah, but they just had to evacuate the hospital right, too. Right. So, I mean, it's a, I don't. This is saying about prohibiting development. Right, development of new or expanded. And, right. It that used to say new and expanding is pretty rigid. I'd, I'd do a thought experiment is that wouldn't a particular evacuation zone also be subject to the building structure, its generation capacity, its elevation? In fact, it would be fair to say that under the right circumstances, if it were upgraded, the hospital would be a location for people to evacuate to. Good point. Well, I Rather can tell than, you they're not there now. No, well, they're yeah. just the, uh, yeah. Key uh, keyword there was keywords there were thought experiment. Yeah. Um, Vertical evacuation. Right, right. Um, and they did. They were lined up. I want to. I I think it would be interesting for us to talk with. The, the problem with, with that, in that instance, would you ever feel so safe <laughs> if, you're, if you're a relative of yours was in the hospital and there was a, you know, a hurricane coming that someone could arbitrarily say, eh, I think, you know, we did all these improvements. We're not going to evacuate the hospital. But if you lose access to roads, if you lose utilities, if you lose, they have generators, but it's just... I think there's too much, you know. I don't think the risk analysis is going to say stay. Mm -hmm. But I do know, you know, I, I guess part, I think part of the, part of the analysis for me is that the, you may not want to be expanding your room capacity, but other facilities uh, your emergency rooms, your, you know, your diagnostic facilities, your offices and things like that, that should be, you know, I think that expanding and including that stuff is, is great. But I think expanding your non-ambulatory room count, and I don't think they're really doing that. I think if nothing else, they're probably actually decreasing that somewhat. That, I think that's where the, so maybe it's more to the, maybe we need to finesse this a little bit with Ambulatory versus non-ambulatory, and mm -hmm. we can we can put some thought into that. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah, we don't don't want to start a policy that we know we're violating already. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I said, we already have the right now. It reads as new, doesn't it? Well, yeah. It does it well in a current land new development code. I think mm -hmm. it says. It is, I think it only applies to evacuation. It might only be A, but Pinell that's what it is. Pinellas County, the Pinellas County comp plan says B as well. And mm -hmm. that was, that's, we'll look at this a little bit more. Okay. And we'll, yeah. I definitely wanted to follow suit with the, with the B for residential living facilities, you know, things of like that, because they're, they're just, mm -hmm. they're awful to have to evacuate in advance of a storm. I, you know, when Charlie hit, we, we were still in the, the city was still responsible for evacuating the, you know, the assisted living facilities. And I mean, I was out there helping evacuate Bayou Village, not Bayou Village, but the one on the Bayou. On, and, and it was just like, this is just crazy. Why is this thing located here? Mm -hmm. It's gorgeous to live there. But anyway, I digress. Sorry. Policy three point two point five has a has an R oh, that's yeah. loose in it. Yeah. Is that the right number on thir on three two eight? Emergency Management Implementation Guide. Is that an act, is that the right title for that? I have no idea. Let's yeah, let's let's check that. I just for some reason I don't think that's a thing anymore. Three 
2.2.9, I mean, it, it's there with a good reason, but it's really kind of vague. Priority goes it available. It became a little more vague within the original policy. Yeah. 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 Was that the city of Carpenter Spring, Spring shall give first priority to available funds for road traffic improvements that can mm -hmm. improve evacuation level of service um, to do or existing so should so I wonder so I wonder if this should say we'll give priority to dur maybe during capital improvement planning mm. is, is that really what we're talking about you know I would politely disagree <laughs> <laughs> so recently, I drove down what is one of our new um, evacuation roads, Maris, that has Maris, been expanded. Yeah. And it was a really big deal, and there's a whole bunch of backstory to that. So I'm mm -hmm. rolling down Maris, and I thought, I'm going to take it all the way to 19 for the first time. Mm -hmm. I took it all the way to the 19, and it's a right turn only. Yeah. yeah. And I thought, no one, oh, maybe I'm biased here. That if we were evacuating Tarpon Springs, no one's heading right and heading south mm -hmm. because everyone is heading left and heading north because you need to get out because there's no way out to head south. Mm -hmm. So my, my thought process might be flawed there, but I would consider that an excellent example of a road that was designed for evacuation purposes What's at it? great expense to the city. It cost us an arm and a leg. It, and it only turns right. So, actually, we just had a storm where we had to evacuate south, so that... Oh, <laughs> don't go making sense! <laughs> but... <laughs> it's my party. In reality, um, there's really nothing that will, is going to help people evacuate off the peninsula that is Pinellas County unless it's a new bridge. Mm. Because you're going to get a tow point. Could be it's signs. It could be signs that say evacuation route. It did, it just, now with all getting into that detail and this detail, it did strike me as odd that this new route wasn't either or, because what it meant was anyone that evacuates or is using Maras as a way to leave the city, because we have a very fixed number of those, and again, the Board of Commissioners at great expense got that road all the way through, and it's a right-hand turn only. Yeah. Okay. Alderman Hill. <laughs> um, no, you're, it's, but to your point, you know, of, and, and I don't know that, I mean, if we had, let's suppose we had, you know, a cat four, a cat five bearing down on us and we knew we needed to evacuate the city. If that was, that is an east west route out, I have no doubt that they would be funneling traffic so that you could take a left turn out of there. They will do contraflow, they will do a lot of different things. They do it in the keys all the time to get people out because there's just no, you know, yeah. so temporary bridge. Yeah. There's just no, you just have to. So, I mean, I feel like if it really needed to be, you know, a left out of there somehow that mm. they'd make that happen through traffic control. See, I thought it, they extended mirrors so all the the um, the contractors had a direct route to the to the dump site. <laughs> <laughs> there was a, there was a lot of reasons for when when that was you know when that one you you legitimately have more traffic you know you have more people living in those apartments there. I can't remember how many there are, but um, two hundred and some apartments. So all the transportation impact fees from that development went into okay. supporting that road. Mm -hmm. um, the it, it was, I mean, hurricane evacuation was a consideration. The city very much did want that east-west connection completed all the way through, to your point. 
you know, there's no feasible way right now to put a left out of there. I mean, you'd have to put, in order to put a light at that, you'd have to probably remove a light at MLK. And that, that you know, this is a still of a l bit of a limited right of way there. It'd be difficult to do, not impossible. So you have a constrained right of way on, on the extension of meters out. It was used to be mango. So it was, mm. there's not a lot of right of way to work with there to, to really think about the volume of traffic that, and what happens when you get to US 19 on MLK it flares out into a right turn and then a left. I mean, you've got a lot more turning movements there because you have right of way. You just don't have that at Mears at, all, at US 19. Thank you. <laughs> I, I'm afraid that you took me far too seriously. <laughs> <laughs> far okay. too seriously. Just that the sentence previously written and the sentence yeah. now, it makes sense is that mm -hmm. there should be sure. a concept for prioritizing mm -hmm. funds. And, and sometimes nine. subtle changes make big changes. Mm -hmm. If there were to be a catastrophic event that God bless that we haven't, but I'll be truthful and go, you know, no one thought it was going to happen down south. And there was a catastrophic event, and they struggled to leave, and they didn't have timely notice, and they stayed, and the storm surge took care of the rest. So if a left-hand turn <laughs> helped save two lives, well, then it's worthy of at least discussion and making yep. sure that we're prioritizing that. So we're at 3.2.9. Is that what the discussion was? That's what we were talking about, yeah. I, I, I mean, I think um, this available funds for improvement, 3.2.9, that's what we're Wait, isn't three point three point four? Is that's deja vu? Didn't we just? Yeah, I was just reading that myself. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which one? Three point three point four. Three point <coughs> four. Redundant, I think, is the, yeah. Yeah. the word. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've got that covered up above. Yeah. Under the. Where was it? <laughs> well, the previous one was public. Public that require the removal, relocation, or structural modification of any infrastructure that experiences repeated storm damage. So that's a little broader. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um. Whenever. Okay. Yeah. So that would get back to Mike. Yeah. Just concerns of. Well, I understand with code enforcement, FEMA, and all that, FEMA requirements and all that. That may. That can't has tendency to. Mm -hmm. Take care of itself, so that one may be maybe a little broad, but that's my that's my since it's just uh, any structure. Would policy three point three point eight perhaps be a good location to put the verbiage in in regards to the new Pinellas County guidelines? I, I, mm. the, the, yeah, since it's already referenced there. Um, Less flood resistant construction requirements and applicable floodplain management. Yeah, we're in the ballpark here. I mean, at, whether it goes there or it's a separate policy. I want to go back though. I'm concerned about do, do you advise us taking 3.3.4 out? Is that just overly broad or should it just be? I mean, well, this ties to coastal climate. Flooding, climate change. The other one was more about public facility. Public facility. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Now, theoretically, because my concern is it may be overly broad. Mm -hmm. yeah. What if it just said encourage instead of require? Mm -hmm. <coughs> Assess. I kind of like the require. <laughs> what if we changed and said evaluate? Mm -hmm. And or require because because ultimately, um, especially if we're complying with FEMA regulations, if we're complying with the floodplain uh, ordinance, um, 
and quite frankly, just code enforcement, that should correct if we need to, if it needs to be removed or relocated or made structural modifications, FEMA or FEMA or floodplain should be able to resolve that by itself. Well, so can this we keep the infrastructure and then just yeah. refer to the FEMA or, you know, see? I mean, it's written as infrastructure. Yeah. Apparently, so this is an existing policy. It's an existing policy that we've had. Require the removal, relocation, and structural or structural modification of any infrastructure. So the original, the current language for 3.3.4 is require the removal, relocation, or structural modification of any infrastructure that experiences repeated storm damage. So this that is, the original. that was the original. original. Yeah, and so we've just carried it over. <coughs> what compels us to change it? Um, my concern is it's overly broad. Um, How would you... If you if you didn't want it if it if you wanted to correct the overly broad, what would you would you re, how would you reward it? Couldn't you just cite the FEMA regulations or you know so it it becomes clear? Well, what it is in three point three point one. It says comply with FEMA re regulations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah, it's just a cost infrastructure. I'm just wondering would it be possible? Public. I think at this point we're looking at all. Yeah. Is is a ro is a road considered infrastructure? Yes. yes. So then we could just put, we'll just substitute. I'll just read it. Require the removal, relocation, or modification of any road that experiences repeated storm damage. Yeah, but it's also utilities. There's infrastructure is broad it's, and yeah, specific yeah. though. So think about something like. Um, Harbor Watch is a good example. Now, I don't know if it, how much badly Harbor Watch might flood, but that is all private. The roads, the utilities, yep. it's all private. So, you know, the, I think another key here, it says repeated storm damage. Um, so it's not like single incident. It does say repeated. You know, but by that logic, you know, we shouldn't be, you know, doing anything to Dodecanese Boulevard. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so, I mean, that, that, this is a, yeah. this cuts both ways, private and public. Yeah. You know, so if you think about, you know, Anclote Road, and, and we have a lot of, a lot of roads and segments, intersection of MLK and Alt-19 mm -hmm. that repeatedly, now mm -hmm. I guess, does it have damage or is it just flooding? So the infrastructure itself is... Is the infrastructure being damaged, not what's around it? So I, you know, mm -hmm. that's why I kind of like the assess or mm -hmm. evaluate, assess and value. Somehow yeah. put it where we're, it it warrants an evaluation and assessment. So well, you know, I guess. So just say assess and evaluate for relocation or structural modification. So assess, yeah, assess. Assess and evaluate. Assess any infrastructure that experiences repeated storm damage for removal, relocation, or structural modification. Yeah. Perfect. Flip the sentence and put it. All right. Now I have one, another one. <laughs> okay. Objective 3.3 and, and also exec, exec policy 3.3.6. It's just something that I, my pet peeve. Okay. Um, where, where it says um, on 3.3, um, the second sentence, I'll just continue the second sentence. Management initiatives to reduce risk to life. I propose risk to life, health, and safety. Because this implies if only time you've got a risk is if you lose a life. And we right. need to be thinking about, you know, life, health, and safety. So life, health, safety, and property? Yeah, and, then, and property <coughs> from natural, because then okay. it goes to and property. <coughs> and, and they exist again in 3.3.6, but that's just my, you know, engineer hat on. I don't, I mean, I don't see anything wrong with that. And, and three, say the same thing in three point. Yeah, and you yeah, might just look the at last your, sentence, yeah. yeah, anything we talk about risk of life, we should be doing a word search and yeah. always add health and safety health to and it. safety, good point. I'm sorry, I'm going to put a cough drop in my mouth, so sure. I sound a little garbled. So I didn't know that we monitored the Kerns' incredible sea level rise data. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. 
Det er bedre. And so do those of us who have docs. We monitor it all the time. <laughs> oh, <okay>. Absolutely. <laughs> and boats on lifts. Oh, yeah. yeah. I do look at where my house is and look out 30, 40, 50 years and see yeah. where they think the low, moderate, and high sea level rise is going to be. I'm going to dictate when I sell my house. Some people are, <laughs> some people are going to get new waterfront. Yep, right? I was going to say. <laughs> From a kind of like overall review of this, are we consistent with other coastal cities with regards to their versions of that, of addressing this coastal management? Let's just put it this way. That's one of the jobs of this development. Okay, so. Mm -hmm. Their coastal management has been approved by the state. <laughs> That's good. That's good. I'd like to hear that. <laughs> you know, I have the app for Pinellas County. And while I was in Greece, I'm getting notifications mm -hmm. on my app. That's good. That Can we talk about 3.3.11 for a moment? I was just looking at that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think this is a holdover policy. But my biggest thing is like, what if this is just not a good location to have a shelter? Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, most of them aren't. Now, now they, well, they will evacuate mobile homes even if they're nowhere near water mm -hmm. and I think it's because of wind yes. so if this is meant to be for wind mitigation I think we need to make a distinction here because I don't want to necessarily encourage Point. Yeah, a, flood. a <laughs> hurricane evalu uh, evacuation shelter level type of thing for flood if the mobile home park sitting in an A evacuation zone or a B or C frankly so <coughs> this peak drive mm. So let yeah, let's just see if we can wordsmith this one a little bit to, you know, except where evacuation is. Not, it, we just need to somehow we just need to make that make it fit distinguish. Yeah, the locate the yeah. environment the, yeah. where it is, or where. Of course, we're not going to probably have any new mobile home parks anyway. So yeah, that's probably a pretty moot point. <laughs> <clears throat> I like it. It's a lot cleaner. Yeah. It is. So to drill down into that a little bit farther, would the term on-site shelter, would that trigger a building that provided adequate level of safety? Does it mm -hmm. go into a tornado-proof building or a flood-resistant building? Well, let's take flood out. A, a wind-related building where it's actually... It's just not the clubhouse. Point. Maybe Does that make sense? To, maybe we have to define shelter. And if it is, at least maybe there's an asterisk that says, hey, it's not just hey, the shelter. barbecue hut. <laughs> a shed. Uh -huh. That um, is, it is a, a shelter space of safety. I think, well, so, so here's the reality of even our own public safety building that we operate our emergency management out of is built only to a cat C hurricane wind load standard. Mm. So I think what we, I think what I would be comfortable saying is requiring just like we just did with multifamily in the coastal high hazard area, we require them to be built at plus three base flood elevation and the next higher wind load category under the Florida mm. building code. Nice consistency. So I think maybe adding something to this policy that would require new yes, new good. shelters to be, you know, new on-site sheltering to be built to those standards. Yeah. <laughs> good one. That was really good. <laughs> <laughs> See what the cough drop did? It, it did. That yeah. sugar well, it right up. just hit her brain quick. Well, menthol hit my brain. <laughs> well, how about if we took it one step farther let's say multifamily it's always easy to use your own personal experience my mom lives in a wonderful community called savannah cove over there god bless it's there right it's a uh, income reduced for p 
people. 55 and older. Right. It's got a clubhouse. Mm-hmm. But that clubhouse <coughs> is no different than any right. other built right there. Mm-hmm. So it's not safer than anyone, any place else other than the apartments, right? It doesn't have um, hurricane windows. It doesn't right. have any facilities. Shouldn't new development that is multifamily provide a shelter space that is built to a higher standard, three feet above, um, and to the higher wind load? Doesn't so 3.3.10 that 3. kind of address that? Require new development, redevelopment, and infrastructure. So, yeah, I mean... Best flood prevention. Well, that's an overall site plan. Well, what if we took language like that, is what I'm saying, in a way... We're, we could take that, edit it, so that you're getting what you say mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. as far as... And, and, I, and I could be way too far down the road. This is building code, but it's also just an, a base acknowledgement that, hey, we've got stuff coming at us. Let's acknowledge it. Let's address it straightforward. There's going to be some apartments and multifamilies built. <clears throat> Let's give them a space within their community that is safe that if they can't take a left on Maris, they can stay at their apartment complex and be safe. Mm-hmm. Well, and, you know, yeah. I guess the, so now, so under our new code, so anything being built in the coastal high hazard area that is multifamily or townhomes, the units themselves have to, have to be built to plus three and the next tower wind load category. So they're just going to be just as safe as the clubhouse at Stay that point. Stay in their house. Yeah. yeah. Or their unit. Um, so, and I... What, what about that development, which is not in the CHHA? That, ALS. That might be a better, yeah, a better kind of way. To, yeah. So, yeah, maybe... And, and if I'm too far, just no, say no, so. I'm just... No, I think, no, I think you're... I, I think, you know, on-site shelter thinking. space and... Cl- I mean, I think there is a... There's a legitimate value to that... You know, to, to that to address that to address to that, types. yeah. Could we maybe because that's kind of getting more of the regulatory side yeah. of things. So is it better to maybe have a policy Evaluate. that talks about on-site shelters True. that are provided, and then say develop, you know, land development code regulations. Or whatnot. It is true. We're trying to keep regulatory stuff out of this and be more to, um, but I think I think to direct <clears throat> us to create yeah. those regulations is probably the more appropriate. Mm-hmm. Or yeah, so you know, evaluate and implement um, more stringent development regulations for you know for on-site sheltering. Um, That's good. Something to Which that effect. Which steers it to yeah. What you're saying, the regulatory yeah. side of. And then we'll you know then we then we we'll, because you know, the next thing we're going to do once we get this comp plan done is guess what we're going to start updating all the land development code regulations. So um, we're going to get we'll need everybody uh, making sure we hit all these things. Now three point four mm-hmm. and all of that. Yeah. Okay. What is three point four point one saying? What does that say? What is that doing? So where there's vacant land, right? Regardless of, let's say that land is has a land use category that allows 10 or 15 units to the acre. What this is saying is that if there's a demonstrated shelter deficit for a category three or higher storm, that regardless of what your future land use map says, you have you cannot exceed five dwelling units per acre. So it's keeping the density down okay. unless um, you have... Let's see. Um, so unless it's subject to a hurricane shelter impact mitigation, so there's a study and mitigation, and the coastal hazard area design standards of the land development code. That's what we just adopted was the plus mm-hmm. three and the and the next higher wind load category. Okay. So. <clears throat> Simplify the, the note. The next one, no net increase in residential density. Uh, no net increase. So this was... I 
I feel like this was pulled out of Well, in layman's terms, what does that mean? What it really so when this was when this was adopted originally, basically what it said was if you want to increase your land use map density, the way it was meant to be interpreted was if you want to I'm in the coastal hazard area and I wanna change I wanna change my land use designation from five units to the acre to ten units to the acre. What this meant was that you could do that, but there had to also be a net decrease, a decrease somewhere else. else. So yeah. what, in reality, the way that, th that we were looking at this, there's a lot of land, um, like Pinellas County, the, I call it the Olsham property, that um, it's over on Carlton, that area, there's all the, Pinellas County came in and they bought that huge yeah. piece of property. That all has like 10 units to the acre residential land use on it. That in and of itself was a massive decrease in available density in the coastal high hazard area. Gotcha. So could you, you know, could you create basically a bank and say, all right, we can, we're not, we're not, we're, our, we're not, we don't, we, if we increase five units to the acre over here to 10 on this two acres of land, we're still not hitting a net increase. Gotcha. That was the way that it was, I, but it's, it, honestly, it hasn't been tracked well. And I would, we also, didn't we, we had the. We were restricting it to five units the acre in CHHA no matter what. Well, but this is, but this is talking about, but this is like, if I want to come in. net increase. Yeah, this is like, but this, this we need, I, I want to square this back to the changes that we just made because we basically said. You can't increase density in the coastal high hazard area for by any mechanism, whether it was future land use, conditional use, plan development. So I need to find out where that policy landed because I think it's missing. It's oh, it's in the future land use element. That's, what That's I'm right. I don't know Thank if, like, you. There's even really an opportunity to do a net increase. Right. We might be able to just re get rid of this because get rid of it. yeah, I think we can. So, so mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So we could. I would like to just get rid of this. Okay. And attorney, you go with that. Put a, put a note back to because we have a similar policy in the future land use element. Especially with live local, I'm totally fine with this. Yeah. Yeah. It says you can just build it anywhere. Quite frankly, it doesn't really matter. It they doesn't. Just, they it just doesn't. Do, they can just do whatever they want. They can. Yeah. Okay. Bonus densities. Mm -hmm. That was what we were trying to create an incentive for people to transfer their development rights out of. So thinking about, you know, vulnerable property that's, you know, oh, okay. sitting on, you know, the Gulf of Mexico. In the long run, because of sea level rise, there's going to be a point where it's not going to be habitable anymore. So what the intent of this was, this was kind of pie in the sky. So, so let's say that that, that property's got, you know, a density al allowance of one unit per acre on it. Can you, you could create kind of a market of, for the purposes of density transfer, we'll allow you to count that for three or four units that I can put somewhere outside the coastal hires or somebody that needs density. So, and then this, that property itself would go like into a conservation easement or something so that it could be redeveloped. Mm -hmm. But it's, it, you know, it was a way to try to incentivize getting, yeah. getting you know, developed properties out of development mm -hmm. in the long haul. Well, let me ask this question. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. I like that thought. Is there anything that addresses someone that has low density land that can get uh, that can get a tax benefit? That's something else that I would like. I mean, I th I think that's something worth exploring. You know, is there a way to set up a local like conservation? something that status that you put your property into with full knowledge that you can't repair it you can't you do you know if it hits a certain point that but you get the tax break 
you know, down yeah. to you know, so yeah, should be that. I mean, m I mean, maybe just a policy of you know, reviewing uh, it. Yeah, re you know, evaluating that. Eva yeah, evaluate you know possible you know conservation easements you know mm -hmm. to reduce you know waterfront tax value and just something I know what we're talking about. I, I think having a policy of that effect would be that's good. You yeah. know, something very valuable to Bl the banking. Why not look at yeah. someone that wants to do something with land that they know they'll never want to develop it because of the risk of right. it right. going to be underwater. Yeah. I, and I don't know if there's anything, I did so, I did some research into that at one point in time. Is there, is there, or, or are there existing state or federal regulations that would facilitate that now that I, if I put a conservation easement on, on the problem, I mean, usually it's more to like large tracts of mm -hmm. land that you're trying to preserve versus I, you know, I own I own a waterfront house on the Gulf of Mexico. Can I put it into a conservation easement such that if it gets wiped out, I know I can't rebuild, but it's going to reduce my taxes, you know, for the next thirty years. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a good that's a good way to try to address that. Maybe it's when, if you look at it, then you you categorize what is eligible, and certainly a waterfront home sitting on property and being lived in shouldn't be considered a a it An eligible, be, yeah, yeah, right. It shouldn't be considered, shouldn't be eligible unless they're going to give up the land and give up the house, and mm -hmm. house gets torn down and it becomes a, you know, and and maybe there, maybe it's just that you know maybe it needs to be a time period on it. You know, you can you know you can keep the keep the single family house there for the the later of or the earlier of either it's destroyed or twenty years. Mm -hmm. There's got to be an end to it so yeah. that something you know, to think about yeah. to, to help address this or, climate yeah, change yeah. issue. I haven't seen one. I haven't yeah. particularly looked for it, but so it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. But I would look, like I said, I think homestead status would be something to consider and if, as yeah. well because you don't want the, you don't want them also getting that tax break. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, hey. with what's changed with the environment, it's something we should be looking at. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we'll we'll explore maybe an additional policy on conservation easements for as an incentive. And I would, and I wouldn't be, in my opinion, restrictive of size. I mean, because right. there could be areas that has one piece of land mm -hmm. that is, it, it's not going to, it's 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 flooding. Yeah. Right. So let's leave it alone. Let's right. just let them have the rights to, yeah. you know. In fact, if you look at 3.4.5, you could actually edit that one to kind of introduce this topic. Mm -hmm. so future land use amendments or tax incentives. Something incentive. Yeah. We'll, we'll come up with something. On 3.4, uh, 3.5, where it says established procedures for post-event damage, is there some sort of policy currently in place for that, like from this storm, uh, you know, to uh, evaluate dwellings and, and structures and such? Yeah, you know, I mean, we we have established. They've established policy. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> but, but, but you make a good point. It may say we to establish, but yeah. what what makes it a requirement that we actually do that exercise? There must be some intergovernmental state coordination. Yeah. <laughs> well, if, frankly, I mean it, it's mo mostly tied to like FEMA reimbursements. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I think Oversight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, got it. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I mean, basically, I mean, I think, yeah. Up north, we had what what they called CEDA, and it was a state program that trickled down to the jurisdictions. It was code enforcement disaster resist, uh, response, uh, and you got 
qualified in that, even if you were a code official or whatever. This was a little bit extra that established procedures. And people would go from one jurisdiction to another if there were floods yeah. upstate or, you know, a problem by the shore for, for hurricanes and such. People would come mm -hmm. downstate from upstate to fortify and enhance the personnel. So it was a statewide program that trickled down. It was one of the... Uh, the things for the Maybe. local jurisdictions. Yes, right, regardless of, right, yeah. Which I, which, I mean, I think largely we have very similar, you know, trickle down here. Mm -hmm. Maybe 351 should basically say um, ensure properly trained damage assessment teams are, you know, maintained, in, or I don't know, I'm just mm -hmm. trying to. I just, before you say that, yeah. determine does there exist. Yeah. I'm yeah. sure their training do. does exist. Yeah. In fact, training and certification, if it does exist, then, then yeah. you reference it. You yeah. say that. You can even reference it if it exists mm -hmm. from the counties or other agencies. Uh, you could just say, you know, building, you know, the building director, fire chief, and <coughs> other qualified city of, city of Tarpon Springs personnel shall be properly trained to um, serve as damage assessment teams, something like that. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Well, let me ask you this on that one, because right now it, it kind of seems like it's limiting it to just internal city resources. Do we want to consider other resources such as committees that, that have qualifications to be a part of that? I wouldn't just limit it to your city. They may want, you know, just like we bring business leaders in to talk about economic growth and development. So it, maybe we just add an, an element and other qualified city of Tarpon Springs personnel and and. I'm sorry. To, so I was trying to think. Um, just like we have is right now. We are. Or just to manage. Just you know. You know. In, ensure. Uh, Properly trained damage assessment teams are maintained or maintain or adequate. You know, I yeah. court. I we'll figure it out. I yeah. think. Yeah, I know what you're going. I'm for. trying to tap into yeah. the public sector, mm -hmm. the city resident sectors that mm -hmm. may have experience in this category. Mm -hmm. and, and by the way, when when I read assessment teams, and not necessarily assessment teams that are in there that are they're they're also someone that says, hey. It's more think at this level. Your your other team members will be thinking the mm -hmm. logistics, the the corrective mm -hmm. actions, what we have to take. So a right. team consists of various levels of skills and experience. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm just thinking. You know, yeah, it might be you know, coordinate damage assessment teams. When I was know. at the Department of Transportation yeah. and they had a hurricane, we had a disaster relief team that we would send to the communities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I was going and I was a district utility engineer. Was I going to be the one that's going to talk about the details of relocating utilities? Mm -hmm. No, but at least I had experience enough mm -hmm. to, to provide some input right. toward mm -hmm. what should be done. Mm -hmm. And I think it was the fire, fire department up north. They had a, a CERT team, which was Community yeah. Emergency Response Team, and they were trained <coughs> by the fire officials or the code officials, and that was more for community people, mm -hmm. not an employee of the jurisdiction. And they're the boots on the ground that are trained right. and yeah. certified yeah. to take yeah. step, necessary steps and actions in place. Yeah. But yeah. then you had a, another level, which were like, when you see, you see the, the mayors or the, or the public works directors or the right. vice president. All I'm pointing right. out is this should consist of something that gives consideration to anyone in the city that mm -hmm. may have. And you're not pointing to a person, but you're pointing to say, it's also open to mm -hmm. that team being broader than. So how about this? Establish damage assessment teams to consist of the building director, fire chief, city of other city of Tarpon Springs personnel, and other qualified residents. There you go. Mm -hmm. um, lo yeah, well, individuals, local or, yeah. local yeah. residents or individuals, something to that effect. Yeah, just something that yeah. that, that Broadens lets the it. city know they can pull other resources yeah. in right. that, in an area that they may need some. Right. 
I mean, as a matter of policy, even that is really kind of directed by Pinellas County as well. So, yeah. you know, they all share resources and send them where they need to be when you've got 26 They're municipalities. Yeah, yeah, so. <clears throat> so just a thought. It's not going to change anything today. In regards to that whole conversation, the fire chief, the fire department gets thrown up around a lot. You know, they got a lot to do. Of course, we have a fire department. We don't have any fires. You know, we have a lot of floods, mm -hmm. but we don't have a flood department, <laughs> and that's what's really going on in our city. We, have we don't have fires. Actually, they have. A, we have a. And she's part of the fire department. Yeah, the what floodplain what manager is in the flood. Is in the well, right, okay. Now that the, the floodplain manager is at the is that at the county level? No, that's a city, that's our it's own? A city resident. Yeah. Is that a disaster resident. response person yeah. that specializes yep. in flood? Yep. There's, well, there's one person. What a, there just one island. person. So, so there was humor there, but it also made sense because so, that's good. We should actually flooding brings a completely different element of risk in of disease flood, and waterborne hazards and all those things. And why we would we assign that, that to our policy. fire chief <laughs> doesn't make a lick of sense. Well, let's call him our fire flood chief. Mm. Um, that's they serve. She, she's actually the city's designated emergency management coordinator mm -hmm. for oh. all things. Yeah. Oh. So not well, then just I guess flooding. that person really needs to be listed. There. Yeah. Well, we'll 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 list the emergency manage local you know city emergency management coordinator. It's a new position actually. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm surprised that we don't have the city the police department on this. They're going to be there whether they're listed or anyways. They're getting in that big rig. Policy 3.5.4, Institute Long Range Restoration Activities. What do we mean by long range? So the, the, the rest of it's in the context with the Pinellas County Post Disaster Redevelopment Plan. What is so, the, what is they call I mean, long range would be like what's going on down in Fort Myers right now. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Major redevelopment. Okay, gotcha. From a, yeah. Reestablish yeah. communication and access and yeah. utilities. How you rebuild, you know. The, is the is the is the word range or is it institute long term restoration long term range is kind of um, like like so long yeah distance. I mean you know long term yeah long term restoration I would say re restoration and redevelopment mm -hmm. yep. You know, it's interesting about 3.6, I mean, everybody here knows, with evacuation, if people have pets, they don't want to do it. They want to stay there with their mm -hmm. pets. Yep. That was, I mean, this entire uh, objective and set of policies was something that was near and dear to former Mayor Alahousas. He was the one that really kind of pushed to get this into the comp plan. Um, so there it is. <laughs> Well, I wouldn't leave my dogs. I wouldn't either. I know I came late, but I have a time constraint, and I'm going to have we're to almost, we're exit Well, we're myself. pretty well done with mm -hmm. this, so. Oh, okay. Yeah. We don't have anything else to move on to tonight, so. Oh, okay. If there's a, um, just a quick update. Um, so from the time we started the, the comp plan update, um, and we had some of our initial kind of population projections and stuff, the Schimberg Housing Center has um, put out new updated population projections and that will have a bearing on, for, to the good really, I think, for the, for the purposes of this board, that it appears that the, like the out to the 2040 population projection numbers are quite a bit lower than what we mm. had, were originally working with. So we're gonna continue to kind of evaluate that and our goal would be to have that updated um, analysis to you guys as part of the continuing review. So just so you've got it for reference, um, yeah. I think it's because it, it's 
kind of makes makes our job a little easier if we're not trying to house 5,000, you know, mm. households and only, <laughs> or new households versus, you know, mm. a thousand or so. So yeah, just uh, stay tuned on that. Excuse me. I forget your name. It's Caroline. Caroline, I compliment you for your communications and how you got us to reviewing the clean version rather than digging. So <laughs> I, I compliment you because it actually went a lot better. It went a lot better. So I compliment you, Caroline. Yeah, you I tried. Great. Oh, it's just the first time she sits up front. Yes, yeah, so okay. yes. Right there. And even downstairs, too. Way off the you 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 handled it well and look how and it and I re realized it went much better. I, I tried following in both and it was yeah, impossible. Yeah. yeah. You know what it you know what it caused us to do caused me personally to do to actually read the clean version. That's what we were begging everybody to do, but it just couldn't quite get everybody there. So go back and read the clean version. It is, it's hard because everything has been reorganized, so it reads better. It no, flows, I, I, lessons learned. So. And thank you. Appreciate thank it. you very much. No, nice that you're out of the corner. <laughs> well, that's your new seat from now on. I like being in the corner because the camera's not on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This was good. This was excellent. Thanks, guys. Very thank good. You. Thank you. Folks, thank I you. I should say, not guys, folks. <laughs> yeah,